What do you think when you think of a laboratory? Gleaming white floors, scientists wearing lab coats, and machines beeping all over. Trust me, that's what I thought too, until my first laboratory turned out to be our favorite common spots in our houses. You might have guessed it right by now, our kitchen. My journey didn't begin with a grand idea or a great proposal. It began with one simple question. What can you do with what you already have? And the answer was everything. I'm Benita, and today I'm going to be sharing a story of everything from nothing. So I grew up in a very beautiful tribal state in India called Jharkhand. And during my bachelor's, I developed a deep curiosity for science. But I had no luck pursuing research around me. Knowing that I wanted to pursue research, I tried to search everywhere until I stumbled upon a group in Mumbai which promoted undergraduate research. And this group was associated with a science education institute in India called Homi Bhava Center for Science Education. With nothing to lose, I applied for a workshop there. And when I opened my email, I asked myself, how did I get in? And when I shared the news to my parents, my parents had the same question. <laughs> how did you get in? Mumbai is so big, you might get lost. Is it a scam? Do institutes like this even exist? I tried explaining them everything, but trust me, I was also a bit scared. <laughs> And after I explained them, they soon came along. And they said they still don't know anything about the program or the institute, but they would want to support me wherever I want to go. Knowing that I needed guidance to attend a workshop in Mumbai, I asked one of my professors who graciously agreed to be a part of this. At the young age, this is candid. At the, <laughs> at the young age of 19, entering such a big prestigious institute felt surreal just like a dream. A dream I didn't even know I was allowed to have. After I returned from Mumbai in the March of 2017, 19, pretty young, I thought I would implement everything I learned in Mumbai. I was beaming with ideas, very scientifically stimulated, until I reached Branchi, and reality hit me hard. And I understood that there's a glaring disconnect, and my excitement began to fade. I kept asking myself questions like, why aren't these incredible outreach programs not reaching cities like mine? Why are these resources, tools, and opportunities so concentrated in some places, whereas other places are left behind? Isn't science supposed to be for everyone? One day, while I was cleaning our old family kitchen, as we decided to move one floor down due to my mother's declining health, and we thought we'll turn that kitchen into a storeroom. <laughs> and I want you to remember this, because the kitchen's fate changed. So I did not have a real lab or some fancy equipment. What I had was an old kitchen, a pressure cooker, <laughs> some jars, a counter, and a deep desire in my heart to explore. That's how Kitchen Lab was born, a grassroots initiative that turned our old family kitchen into a space for science and learning. Our old pressure cooker had quite a career change. <laughs> One day, it was boiling lentils. The other day, it got appointed to sterilize media for our experiments. Old tube lights were turned into test tubes. And we started using media bottles from old cold drink bottles. It felt like we were getting sponsored by some big cold drink company. When we needed zebra fishes, farmers came for our rescue, and they helped us collect it from the rivulet. These solutions prove that science does not thrive on tools. It thrives on ingenuity and collaborations. And with these tools in hand, we asked simple yet amazing behavioral questions. We asked, do zebra fishes take a nap? Or how does the activity pattern of a fly work? Or how do a hydra hunt? We started with six people, and then the number kept growing. In last 
eight years, more than 120 people have been associated with Kitchen Lab in different ways. These simple questions with Hydra, Moina, and Earthworms turned us into a thriving community of students with diverse backgrounds. This Kitchen Lab made students devoid of any discrimination of financial status, caste, and untouchability. I was also then volunteering in a deaf and mute school, and Kitchen Lab inspired me to bring experimental biology to them. I saw them engage in their own unique ways. And then I realized science isn't just a subject. It's a language that can transcend universal barriers. In Kitchen Lab, knowledge wasn't a privilege. It was a shared experience, proving that science is truly for everyone. Recognizing your privilege isn't about feeling guilt. It's about taking responsibility. Let me ask you a question today. How often do we recognize our privileges? Access to education, clean drinking water, and a safe space to dream. We often take it for granted. And I'm sure everybody sitting here and watching there <laughs> might have thought about it at some point in time in their lives. I thought about it too. And Kitchen Lab was my way of doing something about it. Having supportive parents and family and friends was my privilege. Trust me, I would be lying if I said Kitchen Lab was all rainbows and sunshines and everything was really good. It was not. We struggled a lot but everything was worth. In Kitchen Lab, students learned one thing for sure, was to ask questions. And questions are not welcomed everywhere. We faced opposition, and this still continues, but would it stop us? No, not at all. During COVID, when everybody was kept from coming and meeting in person, I, along with a friend, launched a YouTube platform called Virtual Kitchen Lab, where I invited people from around the globe to share their exciting scientific stories. It was fun. <laughs> I still do it. Recently, I, know, I launched That Kitchen Lab Girl on Instagram, where I'm building a community to share knowledge and scientific communications. Through these, I met people who are now like my family. And Currently, in my PhD, I use cardiac in vitro models to study early embryonic cardiac development. They are cute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very proud of them. <laughs> As I'm coming to an end of this talk, I just want to tell you something. This journey isn't just about me. It's about all of us. It's about realizing our true potentials and turning them into opportunities for someone else. It can be anything. It can be mentoring a student, sharing a resource, or simply helping someone dream. Because small actions can lead to extraordinary changes. Science has taught me something. The smallest spaces can hold the biggest possibilities. A kitchen can become a lab. A child with tribal and untouchable background can become a scientist. And one small question can lead to answers that can change the whole world. So I will leave you with the same question I started my journey with. What can you do with what you already have? And the answer might not surprise you, but it will always be the same. It will always be everything. Thank you.